Hey guys, it's Judy from Nutrition with Judy. Thanks for joining me today. While you're here, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you're listening to this on podcast, I highly recommend watching this episode on YouTube as I will be going into a lot of nuance um, and visuals just help a lot more about that. My name is Judy Cho and I'm board certified in holistic nutrition and I focus on root cause healing and that often starts with the carnivore cures all meat elimination diet. Okay, so recently I've been talking on several podcasts as well as my newsletter and if you're not subscribed to my newsletter, I highly recommend joining it. It's where I share a lot more information non-filtered for the social media higher ups. This is going to be a lot of information, but I'm hoping to make everything crystal clear as to how many calories you're supposed to eat. And there's really no answer for that specifically, but you'll see that nuance in this episode and also how much fat to protein and the macros and grams. So let's get right into it. The real understanding we need is that all of our food becomes nutrients that basically feed the rest of our body. It becomes easy to understand how eating pop tarts and cereal in the morning is not adequate nutrition in the long term for our health. Our body will do what it can with what it receives. But over time, when it doesn't have good raw materials, and when I mean raw materials, I mean, adequate or proper foods, it will then eventually break down. So if you think about food, as nutrients, and then it, there's different types, there's macronutrients, and then there's micro for macronutrients, we have carbs, proteins, and fats, and they all break down into different things. There are essential fats such as DHEA and EPA. So there is essential fatty acids that are required because our body does not produce it. So it needs to get most of it from our foods. And then proteins have essential proteins, there's nine of them. And then there are no essential carbohydrates. Most of the fat, yes, every single outer layer of our cells require fat. There's lots of other reasons we need fat in the body, but a lot of the fat is also just to give us energy. So if we're not eating carbohydrates, which is another energy source, we want to focus on fats. And then protein is the building blocks. It is what creates the DNA to help us subsist or thrive. And then we have our micronutrients. This is what our foods then also break down. So whatever vitamins and minerals we have, we will then break down to have fat soluble vitamins that nourish our bodies as well as water soluble vitamins, and then our minerals that are the spark plugs to get things happening. So if you think about food in this very simplistic manner, it makes a lot of sense why nutrient dense foods matter. Because if you're eating cereal in the morning or oatmeal versus eating steak and eggs, you can see the difference in nutrients and how it starts breaking down and how it either supports or debilitates our body. So if we understand now the importance of nutrition, the question then becomes, well, how much do I eat? How many calories do I need? So let's talk a little bit about that. This is from the USDA. And I know whenever I mention RDA recommended daily allowance, the daily value or the USDA, everyone's always like, but why are we going after these recommendations? Because they are the set standards. And not to say that they are the right standards, but at least it's giving us a baseline of where to go from. And a lot of these recommendations are as long as you eat this much or you hit this level of the RDA or daily value, then you will not be sick. So if you see right here, a lot of people that I end up working with, when we do their macros or what they eat in a day, they are eating about 14 to 1600 calories. And you can see right here, that is for a nine year old or even a four year old or eight year old. I think there are some days, honestly, my kids eat more than me. But as you see, as you get older, the minimum they require is maybe 1800 calories. And this is when you're sedentary. But as you become slightly active to more active, the calories go up because you have more demand on the body. And yes, when you're a little older, you can eat a little less, but you see, you do not want to go under 1600 calories. Typically, as a rule of thumb, I do not recommend you eating less than 1600 calories or 18 on most days of eating. If there's a day where you eat 1200 and another day you eat 24, it's not too bad, but you want more days where you're eating at least 1800 calories. The RDA, which is the recommended dietary allowance, recommends that we eat about 0 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So first of all, in the US, we don't use kilograms. So that gets confusing in itself. But what you want to know is that the RDA is again, 
setting a standard just so that you don't have illness. It is not for optimal health. If we are removing all carbohydrates on a meat based, low carb carnivore diet, we need to eat more of the proteins and fats and especially the fats to support energy levels that we are no longer getting from carbohydrates. So this amount, the 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is not recommended. It shouldn't even be recommended, honestly, for the standard American diet. You can watch my interview with Dr. Donald Lehman. We talk about protein needs and how most people are struggling with sarcopenia, um, osteoporosis, and then hip, breaking their hip and never able to walk again or even dying because we are not eating sufficient protein. Now, as you see here, I'm not going to get into all of this, but there's also recommendations for endurance athletes and weightlifters, but it goes back to that calorie need. If you are moving more, your body just requires more energy. So this is a recommendations we provide our clients on a carnivore diet. And again, so earlier I said that they were recommending 0.8 grams per one kilogram. And so it really kind of turns out to 0.4 grams per one pound, which again, we are saying this is not enough one, because on a carnivore diet, you are no longer eating carbohydrates, but generally speaking, studies show that it's just not enough nutrition, especially from a protein building block needs in a carnivore diet, I generally recommend this amount of protein based on your ideal body weight. And I will get to ideal body weight in a second. At the minimum, you want to be eating 0.8 grams per one pound of ideal body weight. So if you weigh 120 pounds, you want to be consuming 96 grams of protein within a meat. And then here's like the max and it'll depend again on your work out your daily routine and just where you are in your metabolic health, whether you want to move up the amount. And I also go by symptoms. So sleep, stool, moods, hormones, and energy levels is also another factor into considering, do you want to stay at the lower end, the 0.8 grams versus the one gram per one pound of ideal body weight. I will give you this handout. So you can look in the notes to see how you can get these. But this is my general recommendation for how much protein you should be eating on most days to be thriving on a carnivore diet. Now, this talks nothing about fat. So I will get to that in a second. But let's talk about ideal body weights, right? So this is the elephant in the room of how much am I supposed to weigh? So if I weigh 200 pounds now, how much is my ideal body weight? And this is not a ideal body weight based on what you would like to look at, but I use the BMI table and I know there are so many flaws with it, but we need to come to some type of baseline. So this is the general BMI weight. So if you see here, if you are a certain height, then this is what they consider underweight. This is normal. This is overweight. I generally choose ideal body weight based on people's heights. And I know it will vary with male and female. And I know it will vary based on if you have a lot of muscle mass as muscle weighs more than fat. But let's just give you an example. I am 5'8", and if you see right here, the normal weight is between 125 and 158. Now, it'll, again, depend on my clients, but I will generally go in the middle of that range. And if they say, whoa, 130 is so low for me, then I will shift towards 140. And it really doesn't matter because 10 grams in protein is not that different. So for me, I would say maybe, okay, at 5'8", maybe I need to be around 140. And I see right here, 140 ideal body weight based on my height. And then right here, the minimum I should be consuming is 112 grams of protein within a meat and then 140 grams um, of protein within a meat. And then there are clients that eat much more than even this 1.2 grams, but you have to figure that out and that'll really vary. But my whole point is you don't want to eat under 112 grams of protein every single day based on your height which will then determine your ideal body weight. And again, don't get hung up on the weight. This is a general rule of thumb, and you will always have to move levers based on your needs. So just to summarize, at the height of 5'8", my ideal body weight or how many grams I should be eating is around 140 pounds, which then is 112 grams of protein at minimum, and then 140 grams on the higher end. And honestly, I think there are many days I eat even more than this, depending on what kind of meat I'm eating. But this gives you somewhat of guardrails. And then I know in terms of calories based on my age, that again, these are general rules of thumb that I should be eating between 2200 to 3000 calories, depending on my activity level. And again, this will be very dependent on you. If you've been eating 
1200 calories and you are 50 years old. And I'm now asking you to eat 1800 or more, you will likely gain weight. It is just a mathematical thing. Now on a carnivore diet or a keto diet, yes, fat gets more burned more effectively, you use it. And so you may have a little bit more grace in terms of how many more calories you can eat on a fat plus protein diet versus eating just carbohydrates. But generally speaking, if you're still eating an excess number of calories, than you used to eat, you will gain weight. And for some people, as you're trying to heal your metabolism and get it back to normal function, it's just a period of time. And then as you start healing, you can figure out what levers to use to try to get a little bit more weight loss in. And it may just be that you want to also build in muscle mass because muscle helps you to burn calories at a faster rate. At 5'8", around 140 pounds of ideal body weight, I know that I need to eat 112 to 140 grams of protein. And then oftentimes, I recommend 75% fat in terms of total calories. So that's where it gets super confusing. What is 112 grams of protein? So let's just for the sake of now less confusion, let's say it's 110 grams, and then I want to get to 75% fat. I am going to show you this super basic calculator that I use sometimes for my clients that really want to focus on calories. So really simply to say gram per gram, the reason why fat is somewhat hated is because gram per gram fat has nine calories per gram, whereas protein and carbs too has four about four calories per gram. Let's say I'm like, Oh, I need to eat. How much was it? So I need to eat about 110 grams of protein. So here's my 110. And a lot of people will say, oh, I eat one to one. And so that means that they're probably eating 110 grams of fat. Look at the calories. I am under, I am at a 1400, which if we go back, if we go back here, I'm eating the amount for a nine or 13 year old, nine to 13 year old, that is insufficient calories. So going back here, this is where oftentimes I see the issue with grass finish because grass finish tends to be leaner. So this is where you will have to be mindful of the fat and where calories come into play. I am hitting my grams of protein a day, but I am not eating sufficient calories. And this is where I think it's ideal for people to be increasing their fat. Okay, I just changed the way that the, these numbers looked. So if you see right here, we're at 110 grams of protein, which is sufficient for somebody that's around 5'8". And maybe even if they moved up to 140 grams, they're still under calories. And this is where it's so important to make sure that you're eating sufficient fat. As I increase my fat, I can see that now I'm at about 72% fat. And this is now going up to 2000 range, which is sufficient amount of calories. And for some people, this may be too much. And this is where people will start balancing their calories by eating less fat. But if you under eat fat, you will risk hormone health. And I will talk about that. So this is where I think the 0 0.8 grams for most people on carnivores ideal, if I go back to about 110 grams of protein, and then I go up to 160 grams of fat, you see, I'm at about 75% fat, and then 1900 calories. Now I know conceptually this makes sense. So from a protein, you just put in the amount you need and then you can move up or down the fat. And then this will affect your total fat in terms of calories. And then this is your overall calories. So how does this look when it comes to real food? So this is my fitness pal. Okay, so I just added four eggs for lunch or breakfast, whichever one is your first meal, and then six ounces of ribeye. So you could see right here, you're at 61 grams of protein and 58 grams of fat. So already the protein is or already exceeding fat. And you can do that. But you may not have that sustained energy and the support for hormone health and other things. I also like to look down here. And if you just hover over, you'll see that the fats at 68%. Okay, for dinner, I added seven chicken wings, and then one tablespoon of butter. So you can see right here, the the total grams of protein is at 113. So I have met my protein needs. But if you see right here, the fat is low, I'm under the one to one in terms of fat to protein. And if you see down here, I'm at 68% fat in terms of total calories. Most people will say this is more than sufficient calories or food consumed in a day. So this is 1400 calories while you are hitting your protein, you are not eating sufficient fat, 
and you were mostly most importantly, not eating sufficient calories. Remember 1400 calories is the food that you need when you are nine to 13 years old, it is not sufficient calories to support all the nutrients you need to support your body. So going back to this, what would improve this, you can add a lot more fat. And you could see right here, and this is not even a stick of butter. I don't think five tablespoons is a stick of butter. I think it's eight. But now I'm at 75% fat, and I'm at sufficient calories. And my fat to protein, you could see the proteins a little bit lower than the fat. And this is ideal. So this is what I would recommend, not the type of food, don't look at the food really, but just the fact of the protein to fat. And this is how I calculate the total protein you need in a day. And then what is my fat compared to that? And as long as your calories are meeting sufficient for the day, then maybe your fat at 75% is ideal. Eat sufficient fat, but I would say eat more natural fat. So more maybe ribeyes. Okay, here's another sample of the same types of food, but I just altered the fat a little bit with the ribeye, I left it as is but then the eggs I cut two of the egg whites and just made it egg yolks. So it's two egg yolks, two large eggs. So now we're at seven chicken wings, and we're now good with the protein, but we are still under calories. And this is what I keep saying to people when people say carnivore is ruining my thyroid or hormone health is is it? Or is it that we are under eating? This looks like a lot of food, honestly, six ounces of ribeye, uh, two egg yolks, two regular large eggs. And then for dinner, you're eating four pieces of bacon with seven chicken wings, and it is insufficient calories. It's about 1472 calories. So we need to make up that amount with fat if we're not going to add more protein. You can try the protein route, but some people just don't do as well with that. And so you can add more fat. Okay, and so this time I added three tablespoons of butter, which if you were to cook in the morning, maybe you would have a little bit of butter there or lard, but that gets you to about 73% fat you're in the area of decent calories. This is what I would consider a more ideal way of eating. If you're going to eat consistently on a carnivore diet, you're getting sufficient fat where your fat is a little bit higher than your protein. And then your calories are above that 1600 calorie mark. And at the fat, you see the total percentage is at 73%. I'm not for fully being 80% fat in terms of total calories long term, because I can show you how much more butter you would have to add. Okay, so I added 10 tablespoons of butter, which is more than a stick of butter, and you're eating super high fat throughout the day, you have the ribeye egg yolks. Um, so it's four bacon pieces, seven chicken wings, and then 10 tablespoons of butter, that is a lot of butter. But I know that some people are doing that. But in order to hit your protein needs, your calories are going to go up to 2500. And yes, this is ideal for hormone health in the beginning, but long term, you are getting excess energy than your body likely needs and you will gain weight most likely. And this again, gets you to about 81% of total fat. So this is the 80 20. But I know that most people that are doing this 80 20 thing are actually cutting down the protein to hit the fat better. And I will show you how that looks like. Okay, so there will be people that will eat this way more. And I don't even know if they're eating this much to be fully honest, but the ribeye is at six ounces, two eggs, um, two large eggs, and then they'll have that stick of butter, and then four wings. And if you see the calories are at 1600. So it almost seems like it's okay. But if you see the protein is under eating. And so yes, you can eat 80% fat in terms of total calories, but you are risking the amount of protein you need to thrive. At 80 grams of protein, you are more hitting the RDA levels of protein than you are the minimum carnivore amounts. Even at 110 pounds, you should be still eating more than 80 grams of protein. So if people are eating this way to get that, the calories mostly from butter, the question is, if you look at this nutrient profile, if most of your energy is coming from fat, the butter, then how are you supporting the micronutrients? Again, look at this, there's six ounces of ribeye, two eggs, and then four chicken wings, but the rest of the calories, a little less than half of the calories is coming from just butter. And while butter is nutritious, it does not have as much nutrition as these proteins do. So this is just my concern. If you're eating 80% fat, if you are eating adequate amount of protein, then your calories are going to go up closer to 2700 calories. So it's just something to think about. So we've talked about calories, protein, how to figure out the protein fat ratios. And here's a sample of eating a rainbow of carnivore meats at 70% fat in terms of total calories, 
And then for people that need a protein need of at least 105 grams, which is most people on a carnivore diet, if you see right here, and again, I will give you this copy, if you could look in the show notes for the link, but you can see how much you're supposed to be eating in order to even hit that six ounces of ribeye for breakfast, eight ounces of ribeye for lunch, eight ounces of ribeye for dinner, and then four bacon pieces as optional. So that makes at least 22 ounces of meat um, to hit that 105 grams of protein. And you can see all these various options. On Monday's meal plan, you see there's only two tablespoons of added fat. And this is eating ribeye. So ribeye is also much more fattier. But if you look down here, if you're eating, for example, salmon, you would have to add three tablespoons of fat to get to that 70 30. The next part I really just want to talk about is why does it even matter where when we get it from protein or fat? Why can't we just do 100% of the calories from protein, and then hit that 16 or 1800 calories, and maybe it'll be sufficient. And here's why I argue for both fat and protein and why it's so important. This is the endocrine system. This is your hormone function. And you could see the main big ones, pituitary, sex organs, thyroid, adrenals. This whole endocrine system is oftentimes supported by proper balance of your cortisol. So your stress hormone, but also sufficient fat. And then you can see all of these are connected. So if your adrenals are not supported, then your thyroid, your pituitary, your sex organs will get affected. And so this is why a lot of people, a lot of practitioners focus on adrenal health. So if you look here, this is a steroid sex hormone pathway. This is really focusing on the adrenal part of the endocrine system. It's a subset of what the adrenals do. And so you see it's made from B5, um, acetyl-CoA, cholesterol. And this is how we create our sex hormones, our cortisol, our estradiol, our pregnenolone, progesterone, and then DHEA is right here. And then there's also testosterone somewhere here too. What happens when we are cortisol imbalanced, all of everything, our raw materials, and this is called the pregnenolone steel, is that anything that's created goes over here and this part gets ignored. We need to balance our cortisol to survive another day. If our body thinks we're running from a predator, or if we're having to manage stress, we must create cortisol. And if you go back to the nutrient table, if we don't have proper nutrition, everything will get shuttled to make this because this will allow us to survive another day. It will help us to balance our excess blood sugar, excess insulin, but creating another baby or having our sex hormones or our thyroid function doesn't matter to survive another day. And that's why this whole thing happens. This is where I'm a little hesitant about HRTs or hormone replacements. I get it. It makes you feel better. But the question is, why are you in balance in the first place? Is it that most everything is going to cortisol again? And so even if you're supplementing with testosterone, some of it may go here, but some of it's also going to just come and fuel more of that cortisol. This is why eating sufficient fat is so important. If we go back to that nutrition graphic, we need sufficient cholesterol. And yes, we produce cholesterol in the body, but we need sufficient cholesterol to even support this pathway so that we have a fighting chance to have proper sex hormones and proper endocrine function. So then we start thinking, okay, so I will just get all my calories from fat, but that doesn't work either. Again, protein is our building block. And if you look right here, how do we create a lot of these things? So I'm not going to talk about the minerals. You can just take a look at that and what supports mineral balance. But if you look at this dietary support part, yes, our steroid hormones are supported from cholesterol, ideally from good fats, but look at our thyroid hormones. It is derived from iodine, which is why I'm a fan of iodine, but it is produced from tyrosine, which is from quality proteins. I don't see here how it relates to fat. Yes. If your cortisol is very high, it will suppress thyroid output, but you need protein to have proper thyroid production. And then same thing with these amine proteins, peptide, and they all need quality proteins. And then iconosoid hormones, the fatty acids needs good fats. So when we decide to pick higher fat without sufficient protein, there is a risk of all of these middle hormones. And that is why I always talk about, you need to have that sufficient protein base, and then you can go high fat. But you have to know when you do that, the calories start increasing. And oftentimes lots of hypothyroidism is affected by these nutrients. But you can see that B vitamins, choline, carnitine, asparagine, these are all amino acids from protein. Where is butter in all of this? Where are a lot of the fats? We need fats. There's no question about that. But that is not what is producing 
thyroid hormones. I want to go back to this. And this is how fat is affecting thyroid. So again, if your cortisol is the primary thing that's being used and everything is getting shuttled that way, it will dampen the creation of thyroid, even if you have sufficient protein. This is where the endocrine system in its entire orchestra is so important that it's really balanced. So adrenals get prioritized for survival. And so if you see right here, even if thyroid is a master that manages your metabolism and metabolic function, if your adrenals are imbalanced because you need more cortisol, and now it's taking all the energy and nutrients to produce the cortisol, it will impact your thyroid. You can see that with adrenal and cortisol function, you need sufficient fat, but you also need protein to support your thyroid. And again, this is where these hormones are supported by different amounts of protein and fat. And you can see how carbs are not really part of this equation. I think protein is a baseline that you must hit every day or nearly every day. And then fat is a lever to just make sure you get sufficient calories since we are not eating carbohydrates. Essentially think of this graph or this table and think about how, if you are not eating enough, how are you going to create then the sex hormones? Or if you're not eating sufficient protein or even getting sufficient iodine, how are you going to support the thyroid function? Even if you're eating sufficient protein, if you are so stressed, then the cortisol will dampen your thyroid production. This is where getting to root cause is so important. And when you're eating insufficient calories and eating at the age of a nine or 13 year old, you are going to risk all the ancillary things the body thinks that you don't need to survive another day, which is making babies going through menopause early, um, having proper hormone function, good skin, good hair, good overall optimal health. I know that this isn't an easy conversation because many of us tend to under eat. We want that really thin model look body or a thin number that we have in our mind that that will then equate to happiness. If you are eating sufficient protein and fat and calories, and you're still not healing fully, I would consider your stressors, what is producing more cortisol in your body that's dampening everything else. And while you may gain weight initially, because you've been under eating for so long, as your body heals, you can figure out, maybe you have to overeat for a while, maybe your baseline is 1800, and you're going to eat 2200 and gain even more weight. But then once you get to a place where your metabolism is healed, then you can move slowly down to 1800. And then your weight can be dropped. It is not this magical thing where all of a sudden your body is fully fueled and now, wow, your body is no longer hungry. So you're eating four pounds of meat and naturally your body eats one pound. Usually the circadian rhythm of eating does not work that way. I hope that this video really shows you how much you're supposed to eat in a day and the macros around it. Most of my clients can heal at 75% fat in terms of total calories with at least 0.8 grams per one pound of ideal body weight in terms of protein. I gave you all the numbers and it's now your choice to decide if you are going to eat sufficiently and it may take longer to see the benefits in your body or even in healing, but slow and steady wins the race. I hope that this conversation really helps with calories, macros. I've received so many emails and messages about how much do I eat? What is enough? And I hope that this conversation really gives you that support because that is truly why I'm here. Look in the show notes for this handout so that you get all the tables so that it can help support you and get an idea of what is adequate nutrition on a carnivore diet to help you have good hormone function, good thyroid health, and overall optimal healing so that you can live the life that you are meant to. Okay, guys, make sure to eat a lot of fatty meat. Take care of your bodies because it is the only place you have to live. I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.